For 12 years, Cross the Nations have been travelling the globe, carrying a cross and a message of love and hope. They've seen God do the impossible and change the lives of countless people. But now it's time to hear the truth. It's time to hear the story of Cross the Nations. But you know what? From the sounds of it, you've had quite a battle with this with this particular lady. Um, it seemed like a battle anyway, and I just wondered, like, if you've ever, you know, if you've encountered, have you encountered psychics other than that lady? And did it did it go the same way? Was it was it like a battle like that? Or um, yeah, we we had a really really interesting situation in um, 2019 when we were in uh, Georgia, not Georgia, United States, but former Soviet Union, uh, Georgia. We were walking from uh, Tbilisi all the way to Batumi on the coast. And it had been a tough walk. Um, there'd been myself, Mike, and Mike's son, uh, Ben, had joined us. And uh, Mike really, you know what it's like when, when your son comes with you, you want it to be really extra special and lots of miracles to happen and for it to really influence him. Because, um, I mean, there's a whole side story with Ben that he wasn't really walking with the Lord at that point, but he'd asked to come and it was a great opportunity to bring him with us. But I'll be honest with you, it had been a really tough walk and we were probably about 10 days in. And I know for me personally, I had on both feet blisters the size of my hand on both feet. I, I was really, really struggling. And we were walking big distances. We were walking 30, 35 kilometers a day. I mean, there were three of us, but it was really tough walking. It was hot. Uh, the road surfaces weren't great. There was loads of things. Uh, and I, I've been struggling for a few days, if I'm honest. And um, I remember, we were like we were coming to the coast and we looked I looked at the map and I saw there was kind of like a shortcut that, that would cut like a triangle off the route, probably save us three or four kilometers. Mike's laughing because I've always got these little angles. <laughs> so we, we 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 take this route and I it starts off tarmac for about 400 meters, and then I remember we kind of crossed a bridge. And then it's just like a gravel road. And I don't know how long it was, probably about five kilometers, wasn't it, Mike, easily, of just gravel road. And we were swapping the crossover between us. And I think at that point, it was coming to the evening, we were all struggling. Um, now, you've got to remember that often when we're walking with the cross, we don't know where we're going to stay. Uh, we... Uh, might not have any money and I think at this point we, we had a little bit of money but we didn't have a lot and we we had no idea where we we're going to stay and we're talking it is probably half an hour before sunset so it's, it's getting late in the day anyway we come to the end of this gravel road and we join then the main road that's going down the coast so uh, we get there and as we look and I, I've looked on, on google maps and what have you and I could see there was probably a hotel 200 metres in the distance, maybe less than that. And we thought, great, we'll try there. Now, I'll be honest with you, we didn't even know if we had enough money or what, but we thought maybe we could negotiate. Who knows what God will do, do you know what I mean? And uh, so we think we're, we're ahead for this thing. Now, we hadn't even crossed the road. We're just looking to cross the road. And this um, brand new 
uh, Toyota 4x4 pulls up. The driver winds down the window. He didn't do that. It was electric window. <laughs> he, he, he winds down the window and he asks us straight out. He says, are you English? Bizarre thing to say. In, the, you know, in Georgia, former Soviet Union, three blokes walking with a cross. First question, are you English? And we'll go, yes, yes, we are. And I can't remember what he said next, but obviously we crossed the road and went over and start talking to them. Um, uh, basically, this guy was a, a driver come bodyguard, but that's a whole different story. And there was an elderly lady in the back who, who obviously was uh, very important. And that's all we knew because this guy was kind of looking after her and they had a brand new Toyota. So we got talking. So they said, where are you staying? And we said, well, we don't know. And they said, and the lady obviously spoke to him in Georgian. And he said, well, if you like, you can stay uh, uh, at our house tonight. And we said, great. And then we can give us directions. And it was probably, a, I don't know, probably another two or three kilometers. I mean, we were done for. And so we persuaded them because it was a big four by four. We could get the cross down in like two minutes, get us in. And we did. So Mike said, they're going to take us. And mate, even though we were exhausted, that cross came down in record time in the bag. Do you know what I, mean? I don't think we even put it in the bag, did we? We just got it in, in lengths of wood. And that, that car just swallowed us up. <laughs> and um, they drove us back to this house. And it was like electric gates. It was a mansion. It was kind of totally out of keeping with kind of everywhere we'd stayed before on the yeah. trip. Because I'll be honest with you, Georgia's not a wealthy country. And we'd stayed in some pretty basic places up until that point. And here we are, we come to this mansion and we walk in and the staircase is marble. And we're looking around and on the wall, there's some pictures of this lady, like with the president and with generals and politicians and TV personalities and all sorts. And clearly this was a woman of um, some standing, some influence, uh, was probably well known in the country, but we had no idea who she was or anything about her. So, if I remember rightly, we went up, we had a shower, she had a maid there working, and they knocked us up something for dinner, didn't they? Because we, obviously we were unexpected, but they put something together. And then we came down uh, for dinner and uh, were sat like in the kitchen, not not, not in the, like the dining room, but in the kitchen, with the maid, the bodyguard, and this lady sat with us, and she started, um, she did speak English, she wasn't great English, but she spoke enough English to get by, and she just started talking to us. And um, do you remember what, Mike, what she said to Ben? Initially, when we was eating uh, the evening meal, um, they came over with an iPad, didn't they, and showed us, um, showed us a television program that this lady was on. And so even then we kind of thought, who is this woman? And um, so uh, I hadn't noticed this because we were tucking into dinner at this stage and I, I was really enjoying the meal, but my son had noticed that in the right hand corner of the, of the, of the iPad, of the show um, on the screen, there was uh, her name and underneath, uh, psychic. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> He was saying, Dad, Dad, look, she's a psychic. Um, but later, as we found out, not just a psychic, but the, probably the top psychic in the nation. Uh, she was a household name. Um, everybody knew her, as we found out a bit later on, on our journey. Um, so uh, she, she kind of like, in broken English and through, her, through, through the bodyguard guy, who was her personal assistant, she tried to communicate to us. And one of the things um, when she was talking with us is that she started to then to predict a little bit about Ben's life. And one of the things she said about him was that he would be an, uh, an inventor. He would invent something very significant in his generation. And uh, the second thing that she said was that he would end up going to America and working in America. And Ben turned to me and said, Dad, there are two things that I, that, that 
I've really thought, um, always have thought that that would happen to me. Um, and I just kind of like brushed it off and said, Ben, we've been, we've been saying that over you for years. You know, we've been prophesying that over your life for years. That's no big shake. Um, and uh, he said, I know, Dad, I know, I know. But it kind of shook him a little bit because Ben realized that this, this is all real. This stuff is real, you know. Um, it's not it's not just a joke it, it, it's, it's the real thing and she was the real thing in that sense um, so that night kind of like we went upstairs she'd given us really the top floor of this beautiful massive house um, and it was all kind of there were two or three bedrooms upstairs uh, there was a kitchen bathroom a lounge area so all of that was ours and you know she said you can stay a week you can stay as long as you want um, but we were kind of like, now that we realized who she was, whose house it was we were in, it was kind of like, wow, you know, why has God brought us here? This must, there must be a reason for this. Um, we we kind of picked up that she wasn't walking very well. And uh, we found out that she, you know, she was recovering from some kind of blood disorder, some, uh, you know, some illness that she'd had, serious illness that she'd had. Um, so we'd already decided that uh, tomorrow morning we were going to come down and pray for healing and minister to her with the gospel. We decided to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but here was the interesting thing. When we went down in the morning, um, again, as I was saying before, I, I, I'll be honest with you, the, the walk in Georgia was for me, probably physically, I don't know why, the toughest one. I've ever done. I mean, there were three of us, but I was struggling physically. And obviously then, as we said before, the battle's in the mind. And I'll be honest with you, my mind was shot. And she was saying, why don't you um, come back tonight? And I said to him, I, I know it sounds stupid, we're in a psychic's house, the top psychic in the, in the country. And you're thinking, why would three Christians stay in the house of you know, of, of a psychic. And to be honest, everything really was saying, don't stay here. But I would, because Mike was saying, let's pray for her. And I was saying, no, Mike, let's do that at the last possible moment <laughs> because this is really nice. <laughs> yeah, I like it here. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So anyway, we, it was really interesting because we, we didn't know quite how to play this, whether we um, confronted her or whatever. I mean, the great thing is, is, of course, we're not back in the days of Acts, and, and maybe we should have been a bit more reliant on the Holy Spirit, but we messaged a few people, and uh, I messaged um, Derek Brown from a church called KC21 in Aldershot, and he said, don't try and respond to her like for like, you know, don't have like a battle, um, but just love her, just show her love, and we really felt that was a, a word from God. So it was a totally different thing to Paphos. We were just to just to express love and concern and appreciation. So we decided then to stay an extra night. So what we did, we walked for a day and then arranged for her driver to come and pick us up at the end of the day and then take us back to the house, which we did. And I remember we drove back and they picked up a meal from the restaurant, didn't they? A takeaway meal like kebabs and all this kind of stuff. Really nice meal. We ate that, showered, went to bed. And I, I can remember, I, I went to bed in the night. And, and obviously, here's the point. I, again, double act. Sometimes one's high, one's low. I was low. I was asleep at night. And I woke up in the night and I found Mike at the bottom of my bed. I'm, I'm talking like it's one o'clock in the morning. Or something, and he's praying for my feet. But he's also praying into the situation because, you know, we're, we're, we are in a spiritual battle, but there's more than one way to win the battle. And this one was, you know, prayer, love, uh, and just showing the love and the life of Jesus. So he was praying. And I remember I woke up and started going like, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Because he, he, he it surprised me. And he'd been praying for me, bless him. And he'd been up quite a lot of the night praying. Anyway. We, we'd go down in the morning and we, we'd come up with this strategy that we were going to uh, speak with her, we're going to share the gospel with her and, yeah, and what have you. 
But I, I remember I said to Mike, I said, well, don't do it until we've had breakfast and they dropped us back on the road because <laughs> I don't want them to get angry with us and abandon us. You know, just say, oh, right, leave you to it, do you know what I mean? And we're back where we were. And um, Mike said, okay, then he agreed to it. I know it sounds really kind of base and, you know, uh, worldly or whatever, but I was really, really struggling. Uh, but God knows these things. And like, yeah. as we've said before, he can work in our weakness as well as our strength. The, the night time, when I was praying for you, I've been up for quite a few hours and I remember started researching her. That's right. And I was reading some of, I was reading sort of a little bit of her book and I'd gone on the internet to find out about what she really believes, what she's really into. And I was studying it for about an hour and two hours. Um, and then I felt the Holy Spirit just say to me, what are you doing? I don't want you to be an expert in what she believes. Just tell her what I give you to say. And um, so I went back to bed at that stage. And in the morning, I think I said to Alan, you know, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be absolutely honest. I'm going to tell her straight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the gospel. And I'm going to be absolutely clear that there's no salvation in what she's doing. There's no merit. There's no eternal value in what she's doing. It's the opposite. I'm going to be absolutely honest with her. Um, but as Alan said, we, we got a chance to pray for her healing. Um, and while we were praying over her and praying for her healing, um, the bodyguard fella got out a camera, video camera, started videoing us, ministering to her. And I, I remember, you know, um, I had no idea at this stage that he was going to put this video on the internet. And so, Lord, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name, I release you from all grip of Satan. I release you of all grip of any darkness. And I command in Jesus' name that you be free, you be free, you be free. All chains broken, all bondage broken. I take authority over every work of the evil one right now. And I command that the light of the glory of God would shine in this heart, in this life, in Jesus' name. Oh, now we'll go let the light come in, let the darkness go. Let the light come in and let the darkness leave. Lord, that you love her, not because of the gift, but yeah. because she is someone who you gave up your son for. Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you died yeah. and rose again yeah. so that uh, Layla may have eternal life and have peace in her mm. heart mm. and have security mm. and know that she is loved. Yeah. For no other reason yes. than that you love her, yes. because you love her, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I had no idea that that was going to happen. So, of course, you know, the lady didn't know what I was praying in English over her, and I was binding the devil, and I was come commanding this thing to get out of her, and I was taking authority over the powers of darkness. And I was doing all of this. She had no idea what I was praying, but obviously I had no idea it as well that, that it was going to go on the, the web um, and it'd be out there for everybody to, to hear and understand what I was praying over. So that was a bit concerning. But we did that. We did that. We just prayed as we felt the Holy Spirit lead us to pray. And then when we got in the car and they're driving us to our, our starting point that day and it was going to be the final goodbye, um, I said to Alan, I'm gonna to to, I'm gonna to have to say it. And that's when Alan said to me, Can you wait till we get there first to the starting point before you say it? So funny. Um, but anyway, um, we got her daughter on the line and it went, and we put it on speakerphone and she speaks perfect English. Her daughter was a lawyer, and uh, so she was interpreting for us because so, I wanted it to be. I wanted her to fully understand the message of the gospel. I wanted her to say it as plainly as I possibly could without compromising and be completely honest. So I knew we had one shot at this 
and we needed to make the most of it. And I did. But I remember, Alan, that when we were getting to the point where we could actually share the truth with her and be straight down the line with her, all of a sudden the atmosphere in the car changed and these really nice people that couldn't do enough for us, who whatever we wanted, it was never too much trouble, all of a sudden just asking them to, to get her daughter on the line so that I could share a message with her, all of a sudden there was this opposition and and, and now for the, the kind of the vibes in the in the car were oh do we have to really do this and yeah. i remember thinking what, what's just happened mm. what's just changed because they've never been like this at all the whole time we've been with them why now are, are they being quite awkward with us but anyway i i, I persisted i didn't give up I remember not giving up and eventually they got their daughter, um, phoned her up and got her on the line. I said, could, could, is it possible I could just share a message with your mum? Would you interpret for me? She said, yes, yes, I'll do that for you. So for about, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, as we were driving to our starting point for the day, um, I just shared the gospel. God really helped me with that, really enabled me to say it. Yeah, really absolutely. Down the line to them. The car went really quiet. We weren't quite sure what was coming next or what was going to happen. Uh, but we pretty, pretty much, as I finished speaking, we pretty much got to the, the destination where we were going to start our walk that day. Got out of the car, we put the cross up. I went over to the car and this lady, who we were obviously not mentioning her name, this lady took me by the hand and she said, I know that God has sent you to me. Well. Wow. And then she said with tears in her eyes, she said, because he has brought healing to my body and he has told me that he is my father. Yes, that's right. And I know that I need a father. Hmm. And she was weeping as she was saying. Now, we've got no idea to what extent she received or she believed or that she even acted on what I shared with her. But all we know is that that meeting had to have been ordained by God. Absolutely. That encounter with her and the, 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 the fact that we didn't just meet her on the roadside and have a chat, but we actually stayed in her house. Yeah. We received everything she gave us. We were on the receiving end of love, on the receiving end of kindness and provision. And for that and that alone, she's drawn a target on her head, a divine target on her head, yeah. for God to land a blessing on her life and on her life. Yeah. We believe that with all of our hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got to Batumi um, uh, at the end of our walk and we got the opportunity to minister in a church called Word of Life amazing pastor um and uh and what we got up to share uh with the church to minister to the church i remember it wasn't just being interpreted in one language it was being interpreted in two so there was an interpreter interpreted into georgian there was another one interpreted into russian so it was extra long right. preaching this message but um when we got to the bit and shared the story of staying in the top psychic's house in the country. I mentioned her name and the whole, because it was a big church, it wasn't a small church, the whole church, the whole congregation gasped. They went, <gasps> died really loudly when they heard her name because everybody knows her. She's on television all the time. Wow. Um, the congregation was saying, um, why on earth? Would you go into her house? How did you manage to end up in her house? That's really what like the congregation was. Yeah. So, um, but that's the point, isn't it? In the in the cold light of day, no one would make a decision. Um, missionaries, you know, evangelists wouldn't make a decision to stay for two nights in the top psychic of the country's house. 
um, you wouldn't do it, would you? You wouldn't say, oh, yeah, that'd be a good place to stay. That'd be a nice haven. That'd be a nice refuge for us where we could relax. Um, you wouldn't do it. But that's the point. Because we walk trusting God for provision, trusting him to turn up and direct and, and show us where to go and how to walk, um, that's why these things happen. That's why we end up in the places we end up, because we're completely in God's hands to move us into directions that he wants us to go. And we, handed, we landed up on that main road at the point at which they arrived because God wanted us in that house. These, these people, for all the power that they, they feel they might have, there's still something missing. Yeah. There's, there's a God-shaped hole um, in them just as there is in everyone. Um, but, Mike, I'd be really interested to hear what, what your gospel message was to that lady even if you could just give it us in a nutshell. Um, because some people might be watching this thinking, well, what, what, what's the gospel message? Um, what is it that you saw, what, what is it that you think will offend someone so much that, that, uh, that they'd want to kick you out their house or, or not be too happy about you being in the car? And I just thought it might be really cool for, uh, for you to just share what you, might, what you said to that lady. Well, um, as Alan said, uh, we, we put this message out to our friends and people back at home who were praying for us and Alan uh, got this message back from a, a guy that he respects who said not to put gift against gift or to get into some kind of like showdown like Elijah on the mountain with the prophets of Baal but actually just to love her, just to love her with God's love and so we did that we, we prayed for her to be healed and um, we, we, uh, yeah, we prayed God's blessing on her and that God would break through in his love. And so we, we went along with that directive, if you like. Um, and so the gospel message that God gave me for her was along those lines too. And I, I remember really homing in on the, on the aspect of God, God's fatherhood. And um, I, even, I even remember starting the message by saying to her, I don't know whether you've had a good experience with your earthly father. Yes, that's right. Or, or whether, you know, you've got a great memory or a great upbringing of knowing a loving father. But, but God wants specifically for you to experience and to know him as father. And uh, then I talked a little bit about um, that the creator of the universe, God himself, is not some kind of cosmic universe power, some impersonal force out there. Because I think there's a lot of that belief in wrapped up in who she is and wrapped up in where her power comes from, from the universe, from, you know, some cosmic uh, thing. But actually, um, the creator of the universe, source of all real life, is God himself. And that God, that, that Father, wants you to know him personally and have a relationship with him. And the only way to do that is through his son, Jesus Christ. And then I talked about, you know, why Jesus went to the cross. And he died on the cross for our sins and he removed the barrier from us knowing God. It's not just about having our sins forgiven so we can go to heaven, but having that barrier that stops us from knowing God removed so that we can actually know God personally. And I said to her that it's this personal relationship, like a, like a daughter to a father, a son to a father, is the thing that's missing from your life, and that's what God wants to bring about. And that's Amen. the foundation to how we minister, to how we operate, to how we live. And that has to be put into place first before you can even begin to build on how do we show God's love and how do we help other people and how do we bless other people. But it has to come from that relationship with us as being children of God. And I talked about um, the verse from John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who received him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. So there's two things, and I talked about the two things, about, first of all, believing in our hearts, who Jesus was. He was the Son of God. He wasn't a Son. He was the Son of God. He was God become man. 
and he came into this world and he, he, he traded places with us and he took all the sin and the rubbish of the world on himself and he died on the cross and he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven and he rose again so that we could not be loved and if we put our trust in what Jesus did on the cross for us personally then we can know that forgiveness and that freedom and that eternal life that God brings but also to those who receive them to those who receive Jesus into their lives as Lord, as Father, um, will know what it's like and, and have the experience of being a child of God, being a son and a daughter of God. And so I talked about that. And I said, because salvation can be found in no other name other than in the name of Jesus. Um, and there is no hope of heaven in anybody else other than in Jesus. And I made it absolutely clear. To her, I kept talking about the name of Jesus to her. Um, so, so yeah, so that that was the that was the angle, if you like. It was all about her knowing God as Father, and her knowing that she was a child of God. Wow. Um, and uh, so that's 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 why I think that when we left her, she 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 was impacted by that concept. What, what would you say to someone who currently is involved in what's known as the occult or the psychic? What, what, what's the answer for people like that? Um, that it's okay to be interested in the supernatural because God is supernatural. He is a God that does miracles today in the, in the earth through his people. It's okay to have an interest in... The, 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 the paranormal, the supernatural. But it's the source that's the issue. God makes it absolutely clear in the scriptures, in the Bible, that we're to have nothing to do with clairvoyancy, have nothing to do with mediums and spiritualists and witchcraft. All of those things, God makes it absolutely clear, are from the devil. That they're the source of it, um, the, the core of that whole activity, of that actual expression of the supernatural, is not from God. It's from Satan. And anybody that gets involved in that kind of stuff, they come under the grip of Satan's hold and Satan's power over their lives. It might feel like they're in control. It might feel like you're in control and that you have power when you tap into that particular source. But actually the truth is, you are under his power and under his grip and you will pay a heavy price for flowing in that realm. If you're involved in anything like that, my advice is to get out quick. Get out of it quick. Really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Cross the Nations. If you've been affected by anything that's been said or you want to know more, please get in touch with us at hello at crossthenations.com. We'd love to speak with you. Thanks for watching.